Welcome to today's Enactus Plus Social Good Hangout, part of the Road to the Enactus World Cup series, a series where Enactus student teams from all around the world share their stories about the great community outwork, outreach work they're doing. As a part of this Road to the Enactus World Cup series, we have highlighted Enactus team stories from Germany, China, Singapore, the United States, and today we'll hear from the team representing Enactus India, Shahid Sukhdev College of Business Studies, who will showcase their community outreach projects along with 35 other national champions at the Enactus World Cup taking place in Beijing October 22nd through the 24th. For the people who are not familiar with Enactus, we are an international nonprofit organization that brings together student, academic, and business leaders who are committed to using the power of entrepreneurial action to improve livelihoods. Guided by academic advisors and business experts, the student leaders of Enactus create and implement community empowerment projects around the globe. The experience not only transforms lives, it helps students develop specific skill sets and a social perspective that is essential to leadership in an ever more complicated and challenging world. With that, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Shuchi, who is the program manager for Enactus India. And she's going to share a little bit more about our program there and also introduce the students. With that. Thank you, Sarah, for that. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Shuchi Soin from Enactus India. I'm the program manager here. Uh, to start with, let me share a little bit about Enactus India. We started way back in 2002. As of now, we are present in uh, over 66 universities and schools across India. We have a total student network of about 2,500 students working on 100 plus projects. And uh, so with that, let me share a little bit about our partner companies. So we currently have about 15 partners in India that we engage with. These are the names. So this year we had a national competition uh, at, on 1st and 2nd of July at Hotel Taj Lands in Mumbai with 37 teams competing. And out of the 37 teams, we have our national champions uh, here with us from Shahid Sukhdev College of Business Studies, Delhi. Let me introduce each member of the team. Watsal, over to you. Hi. Uh, so we are the students of Shahid Sukhdev College of Business Studies. My name is Watsal Kuller, and I am the president. Hello, I'm Devanti Sood, and I'm the co-president. I'm Chirag. I'm the I'm the vice president of uh, Project Namadar Operations. Okay. So the team from Shahid Sukhdev College of Business Studies, uh, SSCBS in short, which I'll be referring to them as uh, in rest of the uh, hangout session, they presented three projects in the national competition, uh, namely sanit Project Sanitation Solutions, Project Akshar, and Project Gramodhar. Uh, let me share a little bit more about our program here in India. We focus on, we try to focus on quality projects and engage with our students on a regular basis for developing good projects by mentoring and guiding them each step of the way. We also provide one-on-one -on -one business mentoring to all our teams by engaging people from our partner companies. We have leadership training modules for our teams twice in an year. With that, let's go back to the team and welcome to uh, welcome them to the Social Good Hangout session this evening. So I'd like to tell you a little more about our projects. Uh, first, I would like to talk about sanitation solutions. This project was started in the year 2009 where we saw this need to educate women, urban, rural women, uh, the, uh, a little more about sanitation, about menstruation. We saw this need among these women who were till then majorly using cloth and other uh, material which wasn't really health, healthy for them. So that is where the idea came from. The basic business plan uh, which flows uh, in sanitation is that we 
try to eliminate the women, uh, the middlemen and create a shorter supply chain. So basically, we start the project by going into urban slums and villages, holding awareness camps over there, educating women about menstruation and the practices, you know, uh, breaking the myths and tabo taboos that have come to be associated with menstruation over the years. And after that, among these women, uh, we try and uh, we actually hold a seller of uh, we recruit an entrepreneur and the entrepreneur is then trained by in a seller in an awareness camp where she's trained with basic knowledge about bookkeeping about marketing skills about inventory management so this basically is the short how we start the project after this we continue to hold the best camps in that area uh, to increase the awareness about menstruation to increase the usage of sanitary napkins and uh, also to uh, somehow help the entrepreneur gain some sort of an um, help the entrepreneur in marketing and telling the people about the entrepreneur and that they can buy sanitary napkins or pads from the entrepreneur. The second project, Project Akshar, was started in the year 2011. Uh, when we saw this enormous need of reusing or recycling waste paper. So when we started in the year 2011, the project was about reusing one side use sheets binding them into notebooks and selling them at nominal prices whatever earnings came went to our entrepreneurs as their income uh, later on we also introduced the aspect of recycling in the project wherein we outsourced our recycling process to uh, other organizations so the project runs in a way that we collect waste paper from various sources including companies corporates uh, houses, residents, welfare associations, schools, colleges. And um, this paper, uh, the paper that we collect is then given to our recycling partners for recycling. They deliver recycled sheets to us which are bound into viro bound and spiral notebooks by our entrepreneurs. The target community for this project has been uh, victims of drug abuse and uh, human trafficking and also physically disabled people. We chose this community in particular because uh, first thing was that in India generally uh, physically disabled people or victims of drug abuse do not hold such a high stature in the society. They are prone to a lot of discrimination and social discrimination also in respect, uh, with regard to amenities. Also considering that uh, people victims of drug abuse are uh, in the rehab center, they have certain uh, issues with regard to their mobility. They cannot travel outside whenever they want to and similar uh, uh, conditions exist for the physically dis disabled as well. So that is why we thought that this was the ideal community for a project which involves binding of notebooks and does not need a lot of um, movement to start with. So that is the reason why we started with these communities. Um, as we progress through the project, the people who gradually moved out of the rehab, they have somehow helped us with the uh, the movement part or the part which involves a little bit of traveling like delivery and everything. The third project, Project Gramudhar was started in the year 2013 where we adopted a village called Ghamroj uh, near Delhi. It's about 20 to 23 kilometers from Delhi. And we started various income generation activities in the village. So the first activity that we started is poultry farming. Uh, the Poultry farming activity involves some innovation with respect to the breed of birds that we're dealing with. And it involved, uh, we've uh, involved a family of migrant daily wage workers as entrepreneurs. The second income generation activity that uh, activity that we started in Ghamroj is a, a boutique where we've uh, trained the uh, women in, we've refined their uh, existing training uh, with respect to sewing. And we've got them recurring orders from bags, bed covers, and we plan to expand this demand. The third pro uh, income generation activity that we started was called Project Shringar, which in Hindi means to, um, beautify. to beautify. So we've trained women in uh, beauty skills, like uh, skills uh, for makeup and everything. And we've started a small beauty parlor in the village. As there is a latent demand for such services, but the women of the village have to travel about six to seven kilometers on foot to reach the nearest beauty parlor uh, that is available to them.
So these are uh, our three projects in brief uh, that we have as a team started in the last couple of years. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you, Vatsal, for that. Uh, Vatsal, you spoke about the beneficiaries. Can you uh, speak a little bit more about the impact that all three of your projects have created? All right. So as far as impact goes, we are now in the at the stage of sanitation solutions, which is in fact being adopted this year by the government of India. So the impact of that is going to be so multiple, right? Before this, we were present across five states in about 50 odd slums with about 80 entrepreneurs. Now we're going to expand this multiply over the next year when the government takes this up. We will be present in 21 districts, uh, sorry, 23 districts across 21 states. As far as Project Aksha goes, we have 12 entrepreneurs uh, across all three communities that we're targeting and we're giving them an income of about 700 rupees, which translates to roughly a thousand dollars a month. A hundred dollars a month. Uh, for Gamadhar, Chirag, like yeah. Amazon, uh, we currently employ four migrant daily wage workers in poultry farming, earning about rupees per month. Similarly, in Alhambra, we have employed three uh, three women from uh, from a community which is actually uh, from, which were actually victims of domestic violence, earning about twelve hundred rupees per month. And in Shringar. And sorry, in Nalan, uh, the community which we are catering right now are uh, widows in the village and in Nalan and in um, Shringara community is uh, women who actually face domestic violence who are earning about 1500 rupees per month. There are three of them. This is just an image of a team member of ours in the village in Ghamroj interacting with the kids over there. So I thought I'll share this with you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, so what were the challenges that your team faced, uh, especially during uh, till the, uh, since the time that you people have been involved in the projects, considering your projects are quite old? And uh, how did you overcome those challenges? Uh, the first challenge, I, if I start with project sanitation solutions, the first major challenge that we faced was the, the mindset, you know, the first thing the willingness of the women to talk about menstruation and such practices. At least in an Indian context, these are issues that are still discussed in a very hushed, hushed manner in a small rooms. They aren't discussed openly in a forum of about 40 women with strangers who even though they're college students are coming from outside. So this was the first major challenge where, you know, uh, that we faced in sanitation solutions, wherein we uh, to get women to the awareness camps to get them to talk to us. Gradually, uh, you know, initially we started with lesser number of women. Gradually when they went, they spoke to other women about it. They told them about the benefits of whatever they had gathered in an awareness camp. The numbers started to grow up. Also, we introduced, uh, like we started offering the women some tea and some Indian savouries. So that was an additional incentive for them to, you know, come and meet their friends also. So it was awareness camp. It was an awareness camp and simultaneously it also turned into a social forum where they could meet other people who were a part of the same slum or the same village. So these were the one or two things that, you know, we tried to do to overcome this challenge. In Project Akshar, a major challenge for us, uh, for us was to actually um, gradually uh, mold the project in a way wherein our communities, uh, communities of physically disabled and uh, victims of drug abuse and human trafficking don't have to, uh, you know, move a lot or the move, their movement is according to whatever uh, disabilities or, um, you know, their considerations that they had. So we accordingly mold, uh, we had to mold the project in a way where they didn't have to move a lot. Initially, whatever, um, uh, purchasing or marketing or sales or transportation activities had to be taken were undertaken by us. Gradually when people started moving out of the rehab, they, they, um, you know, they helped us out with these activities. So that was one um, issue, one challenge that we faced and accordingly we uh, found a solution for that challenge. 
another challenge was to market these notebooks the notebooks that we are making so we also came up with a college leaders program wherein we mobilized various people in the de different colleges in delhi and other areas in the country and we recruited what we called our college leaders who were our brand ambassadors in those colleges or institutions and that is how we started with you know uh, getting some demand and gradually we contacted some companies corporates so this was another thing uh, another challenge that we faced with respect to gramothar uh, the major challenge that we faced was entering a village so a village of about 5000 people and there are new set of people entering the village uh, there was this sense of they, there was a sense of skepticism that why are they doing this for us what is the reason why should we trust them so uh, what we also mentioned in our presentation we undertook some uh, trust building activities which were also in sync with the long term goals of development of the entire village so we started a small library in the girls school of the village and uh, we held various health camps uh, in the village we also got people operated for cataract in um, in partnership with other organizations from delhi so we got about we got some people uh, operated for cataract apart from that we also got in uh, touch with the krishi vikas kendra which means the indian uh, council of agricultural research and uh, we in partnership with them we established a self help group in the village of about 30 farmers who uh, which helped them to get a uh, subsidized seeds and fertilizers and also gave them the benefits of collective bargaining when they bargained for their produce in the local uh, market so these are some of the trust building activities that we undertook we also undertook career counseling sessions in the village schools to give the people uh, to give the students some opportunity some idea about the opportunities that uh, exist outside the, in the outside world that they can pursue after they pass out of from uh, pass out from school so these are some of the challenges that we faced and this is the uh, the some of the solutions that we undertook uh, to come across these challenges <clears throat> okay great that's great all right so since um, for two of your projects you people have been working for past 3 4 years what are your future plans and how do you plan to make all your projects self sustainable so uh, starting with project sanitation solutions so as as once you told you that the project right now has been adopted by the central government so the future plan would be to uh, effectively actually implement the project in 21 districts it, it has to be implemented so going to these various districts uh, actually training the village coordinator which will actually be implementing these projects so what's the we uh, will be showing you one of those images where the village coordinators have been Uh, are actually being trained by one of our students. So, yeah. So, uh, so in sanitation, that's the way forward. Like uh, after the uh, implementation has been made, we'll have regular feedback sessions to know whether how effectively the implementation has been made. And going with uh, project action, the way forward right now is replication. So, uh, right now, an organization known as Delhi Sikh Gurdwara Committee has actually contacted us for replication of Akshar's business model. so uh, they actually uh, we, they will be working with the 1984 right pick uh, and they will be actually the community which will be actually binding the in, uh, in in that organization and in project gramodar we have a vision of bringing in new projects projects like uh, biogas and uh, uh, centering the entire village around tourism idea of uh, focusing around uh, village tourism this is a new concept which is coming up over there and also uh, we uh, we have actually also started with uh, pottery over there so that's a new business model so the idea is to actually uh, in in uh, sanitation solutions it's uh, it's sustainability it's, it's gone to a sustainable level in project akshar it's replicability and it's in gramodhar it's scalability so we, we are in three different stages of the projects hello okay. thank you so much uh, each one of you for all the information shared about uh, about your projects now what i want to understand is that uh, since being students i'm sure you must have a very tight curriculum so how do you manage your time between studies and your project work okay so 
I'll elaborate on that. See, as a team, we are very sustainable. So, as a 60 member team, we are evenly divided across all three projects. So, no one person is burdened too much, as in to work in all three all the time. The given specific responsibilities regarding to one project, and within the project also various areas and aspects. As far as curriculum goals go, our teachers are very supportive of us, our faculty advisors are very supportive of us, and uh, as far as the curriculum goes, we are able to evenly balance it out with our activities. To the extent that the college has actually approved that 33% of all academic uh, attendances can be availed of to, to, uh, to undertake this work that we do under Enactus. Also the fact that Enactus as a long run uh, thing, it is actually the application of what we learn in a classroom being a business college. So by actually being able to apply what we're learning in our actual daily activities under our projects, we're not only able to apply them to the benefit of the project, but actually see how they work and have a greater and deeper understanding of our curriculum, so per se. So we very uh, evenly, very constructively balance our curriculum as well as inactive activities. If I add to the, if I may add to that, since it's a 60-member team, the passion that run throughout the team is at such a level where people don't mind even missing classes at times if they're at a good level of their attendance. Or like if college gets over at five, a lot of our team members, if they can't miss classes, they leave college at five, they'll go for their operational work, they'll go for their partnership meetings. And there are a lot of times where people leave them home at 11, 12. But since the attachment to the cause and the project runs at such a high level, uh, nobody complains about it. Everybody loves doing it. And the fact that we won the Nationals this year, it's because of this passion and, you know, the combined efforts of 60 members of our team who don't care about what time of the day it is, whether they have to compromise a little about with their, with respect to their study. But like they want to say, even directly they might be compromising on one or two classes, but in the long term it's only application of what we learn in our classroom. So that is how we balance our time and our uh, inactive work. Okay. <clears throat> okay, great to learn that all 60 of you are equally motivated and passionate enough to work uh, for the causes that you have taken up. Uh, now almost uh, we are there towards the end. So I'm sure all of you are very excited for the World Cup in Beijing. Yes, yes, so how are your preparations going on? What are you uh, doing specially to prepare for that? Uh, the entire team is really excited for the World Cup. It's once in a lifetime experience for everyone to, you know, showcase our projects, to interact with such varied communities. So not only with respect to the projects and the World Cup, but I think the team and all of us are really excited with respect to the global interaction that we're going to have with a lot of people. With respect to our presentation and everything, we are getting our presentation made again. We're really working out on this, working on the speech. We're trying to bring out a lot about a story, sort of a sort of a story of our entrepreneurs, how we, you know, in turn help them change their lives. So we're really emphasizing on the human aspect of our presentation. Uh, simultaneously, we're also writing, uh, getting a uh, presentation made again from, you know, with uh, getting it made again and uh, writing our speech again, working towards China, working towards, you know, the culture fair. So a lot of things are going on simultaneously and everyone's really excited. Everyone's really working hard towards, you know, doing that extra bit in these last one or two months in each of the projects so that the projects that we showcase in July and the projects that we showcase in October, even though the base remains the same, the aspects are just, they, we are able to turn the projects around. We're going to, we can take them at such a level that, you know, even though the, even the people who've seen our presentation in July, they see a completely different project in October. Other than that, as a team, we are also trying to read about the various projects which other countries are actually involved in, so we could have a good, well-rounded conversation with them, which will actually uh, have a good discussion with them, if we can actually take their views on our projects and share our views on their projects. And some of the people in the team are also of the opinion, like in Sanitation Solutions, we started with villages, moved on to states, now we have the entire country, so if networking can help us, we might even take it to an international level. <laughs> Hello. 
So I think we might need to wrap up. Um, and before we do, I would love for each one of you to share a little bit about how Enactus has impacted you. Um, it's incredible to hear how much passion and dedication you have and the amazing impact that you've made in lives. Um, and I'd just love to hear a little bit more about how Enactus has empowered you and the impact it's had um, on, on your college education and what, what you plan to, to do with this experience. Thank you, Sarah, for that. Uh, see, Enactus has the experience for me personally. I think the past two years and now even half of this year being the World Cup approaching us, I have had the opportunity to interact with entrepreneurs of varying levels from varying backgrounds with varying uh, differences and difficulties in their lives. So be able to reach out to them, to understand them, and understand how they in the great macro diversity that we call India sustain themselves in their everyday needs and see how they benefit and how their lives have been enriched. Uh, it gives a whole new perspective to one's life as to how life is to be lived, so to say. And uh, I really enjoyed this whole experience. I've become a more rounded person, uh, interaction with other people and so on and so forth. So it's been a very enriching experience on the whole. Uh, in Actress, for me, somehow I would call myself as a more connected to the grassroots kind of a person. So that is the kind of change Enactus has brought into my life. One, when I passed out of school, my interaction with the grassroots of the country had been quite limited. So Enactus has given me that opportunity to see how the majority of the people in India live, how can we do our little bit to change, change their lives, and simultaneously also making myself a better person, a wiser person, a more, uh, I would say, closer to the ground, so a more humble person. So that that is the kind of impact Enactus has had on me. Yeah, for me, Enactus uh, has all been all has been all about developing various perspectives. Like the opportunity that Enactus has given me, ranging from corporate boardroom meeting to actually going there at the grassroots level and interacting with villages. So uh, the diverse perspectives that Enactus gives you. This is a very unique thing in, in itself. Other than that, uh, I was really, like, an actor has really given me the opportunity to expose the Indian villages. Like, we, we all uh, had been really hearing about how India lives in its villages, but to actually go there and actually feel uh, the problems that they have or the opportunities that can actually be, uh, that, can actually, that can actually dash upon those opportunities and actually give a holistic view about the village life in itself. That, that an actor has been all about. Fantastic. Uh, really, really, thank you so much for your time today. Um, thank you uh, to also our friends at the Plus Social Good for supporting this. Um, it was incredible to hear about the projects that are empowering women, those afflicted with addiction, how you're empowering college students, the physically disabled, and more. Your passion and dedication is incredibly impressive. Um, and congratulations on being the national champion team from India. Best of luck on your road to the Enactus World Cup. Um, and again, thank you to our friends um, at Plus Social Good for supporting this series. Our next feature will be from Beijing, where we will share more from our marquee global event uh, that brings together our network of business, student, and academic leaders. Um, also, I would love for you all to check out our recently launched Sea Opportunity campaign showcasing project stories, executive videos, and more. You can join the conversation at um, hashtag see opportunity and see what's possible when entrepreneurial young minds are empowered to take action and create sustainable change around the world. Um, again, we will see you next live in Beijing, um, October 22nd through the 24th for our Enactus World Cup. And finally, thank you um, to all of the students and the great work that you're doing. Uh, with that, we're going to sign off and look forward to continuing this conversation as we head to China. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.